Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Mark Cohen, and I'm the board chair of the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center. I'd like to welcome you all to our first donor appreciation event for this year. It will, will not be our last. Uh, first thing, I, I just want to say a few things about the center to remind you about what your generous donations are going towards. Uh, and then I'm going to bring Rustin up, and Rustin's going to tell you a little bit about the artist series. So first of all, I'd really like to thank a few people. I'd like to thank Susan Kessel for her role in helping to put this together. And on the staff, Mirof Mamo, who is on the, who's, uh, helps out with fundraising, has been very instrumental in putting this together as well. All the staff, as always, is really fantastic and a pleasure to work with. We should just give the, the staff members here a hand as well. And a special, extra special thank you to the man on my left, Pat Kessel, and the man on my right, Ken Malloy, who have generously donated their time and expertise to help us with this wine tasting. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. So let me tell you a few facts about the center that you may not know. First of all, I had some data pulled that Rustin doesn't even necessarily know about. Um, since the center opened, we have had 700, over 750 individual donors to the center, so including you guys, which is pretty spectacular. Um, this past year, we served over 18,000 patrons from outside of Fairfield. They came from 45 countries and 34 states. Altogether, we served over 40,000 people uh, and uh, those included 700 different meetings from companies inside Fairfield and outside of Fairfield. So this place really, really sincerely has become the center of our community. But we do some other things too that you may or may not know about. We've actually helped, we've become a place where other not-for-profits come to do their fundraising. Noah's Ark has put on events here and we've helped to raise money for Noah's Ark. The Lord's Cupboard, has had events, has had fundraising events here. This year, the Rotary has done their auction here. So we help a lot of the other community members in, uh, in addition to, help, to, to helping ourselves. Uh, with that, you probably know that we also have become a place where local talent gets to appear on the Sondheim Center stage. And so it's not just, um, it's not just groups like FACT, but we have our high school students who get to come on stage and perform with people, um, uh, sorry, who get to perform with artists or get to warm up for artists. You guys probably know uh, Mitch Gowdy, who is now kind of becoming a country star in his own right. Well, he got to come on stage and warm up for, for Roy Clark. Uh, Mitch told me afterwards that he was so thrilled, he never ever thought that he would appear on the, on the same stage as someone as legendary as Roy Clark. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. Some of you may have seen Simon Estes, who was here a few weeks ago, and the Fairfield High School Choir got to sing uh, along with Simon Estes. So we're doing some really amazing things like that to help to engage and involve our kids. Uh, so let me talk to you a little bit more about what's next. So in the upcoming year, uh, first of all, the board, when I, when I came onto the board, well, I came onto the board about seven years ago, but when I was voted in as board chair, we immediately had an off-site and a strategic planning session. So we're in the midst of creating a strategic plan, and some of the things that we're working on are uh, going to be hopefully music to your ears. First of all, we're working on improving the sound in the Sondheim Center. And I know that people have talked about this for a long time. We've had a lot of different plans, but we do have some donors who have specifically told us that they would be happy to donate to help us improve the sound. So we found some experts who have worked on theaters just like ours, and we sent a team of people to Chicago, they met with the experts, they've come up with a plan, and now we have a very firm plan and a very firm budget, and we know how to enhance the sound so that it'll be a better experience for everyone. So that's one of our top priorities. The other thing that we want to do is work on the facility. I know the facility still looks beautiful, and we still have um, a lot of the original accoutrements, but with that, as you'd imagine, there's always maintenance that has to be performed. 
So we've got a lot of things that we want to do from a maintenance perspective. We're going to come up with a separate CapEx budget, which we haven't actually had before. And we'll be reaching out to certain people who have also told us that they would love to be included in CapEx projects. So even things as crazy as paving the back parking lot are going to be on our five-year strategic plan. One of the other things that we want to do with the strategic plan, and I know that for certain people this will absolutely be music to your ears, and you may think that I'm crazy to even say it, but we have this vision that we really want to be sustainable by 2020. And by sustainable, what I mean is we have relied on individual donors like yourselves, like my family, everyone who's in the room. Um, we've relied on indiv individual donors very heavily, and we still do, and we're going to for the next couple of years. But what we're hoping to do is to increase our endowment. We're hoping to add new revenue generating opportunities and some other things that have just been kind of bubbling up that we know that we can do to help to, to reduce the reliance on individual donors. Um, some of the things, as you would imagine, are going to have to happen in the expo hall. And so we've been looking really seriously at what can we do with the hall in its current configuration that could bring in new people and to help us to increase our revenues. Well, one of the ideas that we've already implemented that you probably know about was the farm show. So we had two board members, Tracy Hammes and Kenny Norton, who decided that we really needed to have a farm show and they were going to make it happen. And by golly, they did. Have any, were any of you guys at the farm show? My gosh, we had so many people come in here. Every single vendor who paid to attend the event wants to come back. In fact, we now have more vendors who want to be in the next farm show than we even have room for. So that's the kind of thinking that we need and that we're going to use to help to propel us into the future. So with that, I'm not going to continue to bore you with my New York nasal speech. Um, I know that one of the things that you came here for was to find out about our upcoming artist series. So let's bring our fearless leader, Rustin Lippincott, up talk about the artist series. All right. Well, thank you uh, for coming. I have, to, I have to say that this is the first time we've done this event, and I'm pleased to see friends from Mount Pleasant and Fort Madison and, of course, Fairfield. So thanks. And this is, this is a fancy event. This is the fanciest stuff we've done. And I like to say fancy. Um, anyway, so uh, in your, on your tables are, are the artist series packets. And um, I just want to highlight a couple of the shows. This year is our uh, seventh year that we've done an artist series. And really that came about from when we came on in 2009. Uh, we didn't know what the heck to do, so we thought, let's try to bring some diverse, exciting stuff to the stage and see how it sticks. Well, I can tell you that it's stuck pretty well, and we're continuing to, to move forward. So this year, and, and a couple years ago, we started to theme the series to make it sound really hip and cool. So this year is called The World on Stage. Why, you might ask? the world on stage because we will have performances from Russia, the suspense quietness, um, Ireland, China, New Zealand, Denmark, and of course, national Broadway shows from the United States. So it's fitting that we call it the world on stage. So, a couple other things I want to highlight. We kick off with a really fun show. Uh, it's called Outrageous, and it will be s pop singing, singing from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, with a live band with three live performance painters behind them doing life-size pictures of Bono, of Lennon, of, you know, uh, maybe Barack Obama. It, it's going to be a lot of fun, so there will be singing and music and art going on. So I thought it was a great way. It is Fairfield. We do like art, both visual and performing. So that's how we're going to kick it off. And then chamber music. I, I just want you to think about when you look through this list. So think about how we go from a bird show to a chamber orchestra, all in 16 shows. So if there's not something for your liking here, 
we've got to chat because there's a lot going on here. So anyway, I hope that you will uh, review that. I can tell you that you are an exclusive group. This has not been published to the public. It will go on, on sale later in July. So you guys are charged with one thing tonight. You need to tell everyone you know, you pick five shows and you tell everyone you know about five shows. So when we announce, everybody comes running to get tickets. So you're probably thinking, well, I want to get tickets before they do. <laughs> we got you covered there too. <laughs> on your sheet is our hot off the, on your table is our hot off the press membership flyer. Segway, go from talking about the shows to how can you get tickets first? Well, check out that flyer and you'll see that uh, at the beginning of July, we're gonna have a two week period for members only where you can get tickets before they can, before anyone else can buy them. So my sales pitch is done. I just wanna thank you. Uh, you know, I try to incorporate humor because if I had to listen and look at to me speak, I'd want some kind of humor. So that's why I'm trying to make it fun. And this is a really exciting place. Not always an easy place, but it's fun. So I like to bring, so I am kind of a goofball naturally. Um, but I wanna thank the staff. I wanna thank my board of directors. I wanna thank our fundraising committee uh, that, that came up with this night. And of course, we couldn't do it without these two guys, Pat and Ken and Terry over there. Uh, I'm sure you'll tell them what's happening, but they're Terry over there with the blind taste test. So uh, we've got something that as a thank you for Ken and Pat, you know, they're wild guys. They might drink a lot of wine. So go ahead and open them so we can show everybody. Uh, and this might be our next donor appreciation event. So you never know, you got wine openers this time. You might get, um, so these guys might get a little crazy at the party. Put it around your neck. And it's a wine glass holder. So anyway, thanks for coming. Um, let's do this again together. It's gonna be an exciting year. Uh, we do have a summer camp, something brand new I forgot. A summer camp that we're doing for elementary kids. So, and you could pretend to be an elementary kid if you really wanna be in the summer camp but we're gonna, it's a two week camp. So there is not a thing that we won't try here at the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center and we won't, we do it because you're right along with us. So have fun, drink a lot of wine. It's fancy wine, it's fancy cheese because you guys are rock. Thank you so much.